Greetings good people! I just recently made a video on how Monero is one of the most untraceable cryptos of them all. Its biggest weakness though, cashing out large amounts. And that's where other techniques come into play. In the next few minutes, I'll break down the most proven methods to completely obfuscate your crypto transactions with simple made analogies. These methods are used by those who truly understand privacy. Now, some of them do require technical know-how, but if you're not an expert, do not worry. The last one ties everything in together, and it is the simplest, most accessible way to cash out your crypto anonymously. So stick around for that. Now, the reason you'd wanna make your crypto transactions anonymous is pretty simple. All blockchain transactions are recorded on the blockchain forever. And privacy cryptos such as Monero, even though they're great for untraceability, they still require you to use the internet and exposes you to metadata and your IP address. As I mentioned in my previous video, caching them out can be quite difficult. It used to be easy with P2P services like local Monero or local crypto, but with that disappearing, the question remains what options are left. So let's assume that you've been trading on a centralized exchange and now you wanna obfuscate your crypto. Even though it's a bit more difficult, what you need to do is break the chain between your wallet and your identity. And the easiest way to do that is to use a mixer or a tumbler. Just a quick post editing comment. Even though centralized exchanges still are not required to send all of your information to your tax authorities, by the way, the EU is changing that in 2026, we still highly recommend you to stop using centralized exchanges, go through cold storage wallets and DeFi because they will all be reporting on you in the future. And if you have used Binance or Kraken, even though they're convenient, you're probably still going to need creative accounting to show that paper trail where that crypto went. Anyway, back to the video. Now, the easiest way to explain what a mixer or tumbler does is with a pile of coins. Imagine your friend and you, you have one pile, he has another one, and you throw it into a batch and then start mixing, tumbling, tumbling, and then eventually you take out the same number that you put in, but they won't be the same coins. That's pretty much what a tumbler and a mixer does. Some of the well-known services include Mixero and Coinomize, and they work pretty well for non-privacy coins such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and stable coins. But here's the catch. Mixers aren't entirely invisible. The blockchain still records that your coins went through the tumbler, and this can cause red flags. Exchanges can refuse to onboard those funds, one of the most notorious examples being Tornado Cash. After it was sanctioned, exchanges actually blacklisted wallets associated to it and refused to onboard the tumbled Tether. In fact, USDC transactions were frozen by its parent company Circle for being associated with the mixer. So to solve this problem, a couple of mixers have introduced a delay in payments. To explain what it is, I'll use a simple analogy. Imagine you're walking through the snow and somebody's right behind you. They can track where you went and when you went. If deposits and withdrawals happen instantaneously, analysts can match them up using timestamps, transaction sizes, and patterns. But by delaying the payouts, it scrambles their ability to track where the money went. And these mixers, they allow you to delay it for a couple of hours and even for a few days. Another analogy that came to mind is if you're being followed in a train station. If you exited the station doors immediately, the person tracking you can easily follow. But if you sit down on a bench, wait for a while, leave at a different time, especially when a crowd goes through, all of a sudden it becomes much harder to know when you left and where you went. And that's essentially what a mixer with a delayed payout does. But delaying transactions simply isn't enough, especially if you're using non-privacy coins such as Bitcoin or Ethereum. A far more effective strategy is to use chain hopping or atomic swaps. Essentially what you're doing is you're jumping from one blockchain network to another. So if you're using Bitcoin's blockchain network, you're jumping to Ethereum's and from Ethereum's to Binance's. And instead of keeping all of your funds on one network, you're jumping through multiple ones, which creates an obstacle for all the analysts trying to track you. In, in layman's terms, the best analogy I could give you is imagine you're on a highway and somebody is following you, as always, and you're able to teleport from one interchange to another, and at the same time, you're able to transform your car into a new one. So in crypto terms, teleporting from one interchange to another is using a different network, and changing or transforming your car is converting your crypto from one to another.
And even if the person following you knew what your previous car looked like, they won't know what the new one is and they won't know which highway you took. So chain hopping is like getting into an alleyway and being able to completely convert your car go on to a new highway. It's very difficult to trace, especially if you do it multiple times on multiple blockchain networks. Another very effective but more complicated technique is called peel chains or payment splitting. Essentially what you're doing is you're breaking down larger transactions into smaller ones and then sending them out to different addresses only later on to recuperate them into a specific wallet. And this helps very well for obfuscating the origin and the destination of the transaction. The easiest way to speak about it in layman terms is imagine you're sending a secret message in World War II and you don't want the enemy to decode it. What you can do is you can send out 10 different postcards instead of one specific letter. So if the enemy finds one of the postcards cards they don't have the entire picture so in crypto terms if you have 10 bitcoins instead of sending them all at once you send out one bitcoin to one specific address and later on you'll bring it into one wallet and this means that if somebody finds one of the transactions they don't know the entire picture it's like trying to decode a puzzle without all the pieces the only issue about this strategy is obviously that you need to pay for the stamp of the postcard it becomes more expensive the more that you split the chain now the simplest technique of them all and the one that makes all of the previous methods work is a private over-the-counter dealer. All the previous strategies that I mentioned, mixers, chain hopping, payment splitting, they only work if you have a reliable way of cashing out without using centralized KYC exchanges. An OTC dealer is essentially a private crypto broker. He will exchange your cryptocurrencies for a fiat wire and send it to whatever bank account you want, obviously for a small commission. He finds the buyer for your cryptocurrencies and there's no KYC, no biometrics, a simple trust-based transaction. Now, the reason why I keep emphasizing over-the-counter dealers in pretty much all of my crypto videos is because it is the most reliable and efficient bridge between the crypto world and the traditional banking system. The OTC dealer can convert your crypto in whatever payment form you want, whether it be cash, whether it be a bank wire, whether it be stable coins. Now, it does take time to find a reliable dealer who also gives good rates. Depending on where you're located, we may be able to help you with that. Anyway, that's it for today's presentation. If you enjoy this type of content, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. I made a previous video on how to cash out your cryptos anonymously if you don't have the source of funds. I'll be seeing you in the next presentation, but until then, bye-bye.